Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Lily, and I am so happy that you are here with me today, joining me on my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be working on grungy hearts. And I mentioned that I would be working on these in my last video. And it has been a minute uh, since my last video, but I took a little trip in between. And so that's why there's this delay. But here we are. Look at how cute they turned out. Now, I did think they were going to turn out much grungier than this. Um, they are grungy, but they are super, super cute. And I just love how they turned out. So I'm showing you some of the samples that I made before recording the process, which is uh, up ahead. But look at how cute they are. And they're in all kinds of different sizes. Some of them were cut using a Tim Holtz die, and I'll show you that in just a moment. And then others were just haphazardly cut out with my scissors, like these. So it's whatever you have handy, and you'll see how I will demonstrate the use of the um, uh, die cut. And then also just using my scissors. This one is my absolute favorite one. And this is one that I cut from corrugated cardboard. In fact, all of these hearts are made from corrugated cardboard. And it's just random packaging that I have been collecting specifically for this project. And in that previous video where I did a flip through of the junk journals, and I will list those below. I kind of showed you a little uh, sneak preview of one of the corrugated hearts that I used on one of the front covers. And that one in that previous video, I left it as it was. It was just a corrugated heart and I loved it. I loved it just as it was, nice and plain. But in today's video, we are going to embellish. And look at how cute that tiny little one is. We are going to embellish and grungy up even more these um, these corrugated heart corrugated hearts. <laughs> That's what they are. So I'll be showing you some of the supplies that I used. So of course my favorite white chalk paint, and then I have this glitter paste, and I don't have the bottle uh, the little bottle right in front of me. I think it's by A R T. And then I have Ranger's Matte Gel Medium because this stuff is what holds the embellishments on the uh, cardboard. And I've had that Ranger glue for several years. But this one, however, I had to use the Beacon 3-in-1 because I think it's because it had that piece of lace in between and the Matte Gel Medium just wouldn't keep it in place. So I kind of go back and forth between different adhesives. So you will use what you what is best for you and what works my grandson as I was working on the hearts my grandson showed up and he brought me a caramel macchiato how sweet is that <laughs> um, this is the steel die that I'm using for the hearts it is one of my absolute favorite dies from Tim Holtz I use this one a lot and it's because the heart shape is my favorite shape there is. So if you don't have this die, uh, maybe you have a different die that you could use, or maybe you don't need a die at all. You could just easily cut out a heart shape with your um, scissors. I'm using a couple different corrugated cardboards. One is thinner than the other. And I don't mind this one that has that white backing. It is a little bit thicker than the other one, but because I'm going to run it through the Big Shot, it actually flattens it a little bit. So I'm not too worried about bulk, except how, um, in a moment, I'll show you how I add bulk anyway. <laughs> so it kind of defeats the purpose there, but... But let's proceed. So I'm just cutting the uh, scrap pieces of corrugated cardboard so they could fit nicely over the steel die. 
and that thinner one cuts so much smoother and easier than the thicker one so I cut out I edited out the part where I struggled with the thicker one <laughs> but I still enjoy working with both of them so I'm just going to create my little sandwich with this steel die and run those two pieces of of cardboard through my big shot I have had this big shot for such a long time you guys and the handle is like it's coming apart so I have to be really careful and keep it together I'm just afraid it's just going to butterfly open you know uh, but so far so good I know there's a new one out there but I don't need it just yet <laughs> this one's still fine and I love how the negative looks so I'm going to hold on to those for a while. Don't know if I'll use them, but I'll hold on to them for a little bit. And look at how beautiful those hearts are. So nice. So I told you earlier that I took a little trip and I was in California for my grandmother's, my paternal grandmother's 100th birthday, you guys. And I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but I was there um, last weekend, a week ago, so mid-February. And it was, oh my gosh, we went down to um, Los Angeles. The weather was amazing. It was in mid-70s, absolutely perfect. And after having some snow here, we were in the teens. So, oh my gosh, I welcomed that warm weather. So right now, I'm just drawing a couple of heart shapes on that negative piece and I'm just gonna cut it out cut out two um, hearts so again you don't have to use a die you can just fussy cut some hearts super easy and they don't have to be perfect um, in fact the wonkier I think the better they will look And so I actually like, I like these because they're a little bit larger than the die cut ones. In fact, I had already, I, I had previously cut out some larger ones, like that favorite one that's over there on the right hand side. Yeah, that one was pretty large. That would make a perfect, um, a perfect embellishment for the front cover of a journal. And it's because of that um, added floral embellishment that I added. I think it would be too bulky for the actual um, interior of a journal, but for the front cover, I think it would be perfect. So see how wonky these little hearts are? But they are perfect that way. Absolutely perfect. So get to cutting some hearts. And then we are going to peel back the top layer of that cardboard to kind of expose the um, that center core. I went to Hobby Lobby last month and I went with, I took my granddaughter with me and uh, we just went kind of to walk around and I went through the paper section they sell corrugated sheets of corrugated cardboard in like the scrapbooking aisle. Um, but you don't have to buy it. <laughs> I'm sure you have a cardboard box somewhere that you can use. But I was really surprised that corrugated sheets of corrugated cardboard are, are for sale. And you know how I said I was on a no spend? Um, well, that was January. And February still kind of no spend, but I did spend a few dollars on some scrapbooking paper and uh, mainly heart patterned heart paper because I have a weakness for hearts so now I'm peeling off that top layer exposing that center core and I was actually surprised at how easy it was to tear to tear that top layer off because the ones I did off camera I struggled with those so it was very nice 
for demo, you know, for demonstration purposes that it worked out, it worked out well. I'm also going to die cut some heart shaped pieces on this book paper. To add as embellishment on the hearts. We'll see. We'll see where we go with it. So yeah, you guys, California was amazing. The weather was perfect. And we celebrated my grandmother's 100th birthday. I saw family that I had not seen in years. Some cousins over 10 years, close to 20 years. So it was such a nice treat. And my grandmother was there with us all day all day we started with um a celebratory mass for her and that was beautiful and then and then we had um food and music there was a mariachi and oh my gosh all the food so much food and there was dancing and we all got to share stories, um, great stories uh, about my grandmother, you know, just memories that we had, and it was so nice. I shared that uh, my grandmother, my grandmother used to have a train case that I absolutely loved, and I was little, maybe seven, eight years old, and she would let me play with her train case, and that's where she kept her cosmetics and some of her jewelry. And uh, she would, it was, I couldn't wait to grow up to have a train case just like my grandmother. And now I have, I kid you not, you guys, I have about 25 train cases. And that's where my love of train cases started. So I told that story. <laughs> so now we're just going to uh, add a little bit of vintage photo to the edges of the hearts. Just making them a little bit grungier and I miss pointing out the fact that I used a little bit of the book page on one of the hearts just kind of tore it up just so it exposes some of that uh, some of that cor corrugation that's not even a word you guys don't use it that corrugated cardboard so you could see that heart with the book page and the cardboard I mean, I'm making up words as I go. Don't listen to me. <laughs> so the other thing that my grandmother um, showed me how to do is how to drink tea. How to, how to drink tea um, like a proper lady. <laughs> so we would play tea when, we, when I was younger, and I remember that as well. So every time I go to drink a cup of tea or even my cup of coffee, um, I remember her showing me, showing me how to do it. So... I share that memory as well. So it was really nice to hear how my grandmother influenced all of my cousins and and my aunts and my uncles. So it was really, really fun hearing all of those stories. I'm now using a little bit of the chalk paint to add more of that distress. And other videos that I've shown, I, I like that. I talk about how much I like the chippy paint look and this is my um like my, my rendition of a chippy paint look so distress doesn't just have to be um dark ink color or um it can also be uh highlights with this white chalk paint and that also adds that distressed look to it like the chippy paint. So I love how that turned out. And I started using that cosmetic sponge, but then I kind of go back and forth between that and my finger. By the end of this, I had white chalk paint. I had glue. I had gold paste on my fingers. Remember that one time I had a really cute manicure? Yeah. It's kind of hard to keep a manicure uh, when we're working with um, mixed media. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had any client appointments, so we're good. We're good. Haven't seen any people other than last week in California. I did have 
I did have cute a cute manicure. Not anymore. So this is the paste. And I have a different one that is a gold wax, but this one is a gold paste. And I don't want to put my fingers into the gold paste. I'm just worried about contaminating it. So I'm just going to use one of these um, cotton swabs. And you only need a little bit of it. It goes a long way. I'm also going to show you an alternative. So if you don't have uh, gold paste or gold wax, you can also use gold paint, gold acrylic paint, or any other type of, um, maybe you have like a, what was that stuff called? It's like a, you can stencil with it, and my mind went blank. Paste? I guess it's paste. Maybe you have some of that, so. And it doesn't have to be gold. It can be silver, but I just love the way the gold looks. Look at that. Nice and grungy. So, yeah. So, in California, I was only there. It was a quick turnaround trip. I drove out with my roommates, a.k.a. parents, <laughs> Uh, on a, on a Friday morning and we drove back on Monday so super super quick trip but we did so much in that weekend so all all day Saturday was dedicated to my grandmother and then on Monday we got to see other other relatives as well on my mother's side so here is the gold acrylic paint, and I will demonstrate with this one as well. And then I will show a comparison. I'll put them side by side so you could see the difference between, excuse me, the difference between the two. I'm getting way ahead of myself. And it, there's not much difference between the two. So whatever you have handy. One of the other things that I did when making these uh, grungy hearts was I went through my stash to use embellishments that, that I haven't used in a really long time. So kind of using up my stash as well. So here's the gold, the acrylic paint. Turned out super cute, just as nice as the paste. Again, whatever you have handy. We went to a bakery in LA called Porto's. So if you are in Los Angeles and you are familiar with the Cuban bakery called Porto's, you know how good it is. And so for breakfast on Monday morning, I had a Cuban sandwich, which is my favorite, favorite sandwich of all time. And I'm here in Utah. I don't know of any place here in northern Utah that makes Cuban sandwiches but I looked up a recipe and it doesn't it doesn't look very difficult to make so I will I will attempt to make a Cuban sandwich so here we go side by side the right is the gold paste and to the left is the acrylic paint so you can kind of see it's not a big difference they still shine just as beautiful let me know if you've had a Cuban sandwich. They are so good. If you haven't and you have a Cuban restaurant nearby, um, go have one and then let me know what you think. They are so good. They grill the bread um, with butter and then there is pork loin and ham and cheese and mustard and a pickle. And it's so good. I should have brought one with me. Mm -mm. Okay, so... Speaking of things that I haven't used in a long time, this is a little box that I picked up at a thrift store a while back. And in it, I had these die cuts. And I can't tell you what, what uh, die cut I used for these because I don't remember. 
but I came across them and look at how cute they're going to look on these hearts. So again, just random things from a stash that I'm adding as embellishments. And these were die cut, I do remember that these were die cut from scrap pieces of colored cardstock that I had splattered with Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine. So you can kind of see a little bit of the gold speckles on those leaves. That was a long time ago, you guys. It, years. Five, six years maybe. <laughs> wow, maybe longer. I never used them. I die cut them and then put them away. And here they are. So let's use our stash. Use it or lose it. I did bring back some Porto's uh, bakery treats. They have these uh, really good, like, uh, guava, guava strudels. Oh my gosh, guava and cream cheese strudels. Mm, I didn't have any of those, but I brought some for my daughters. I also brought them these uh, really good potato balls. And it's like a deep fried mashed potato ball with this meat mixture in the center. Oh my gosh. It's making my mouth water right now. Kind of thinking on how else to embellish it. So I took one of those uh, book page hearts, glued it right over the die cut leaf, and I had this little piece of lace just sitting on my desk. So I thought I would add that too. So I pick up a few other things that are just random on my desk. So may I suggest that you kind of go through your, your stash and grab the most random of things and just put them on your work table. I bet you you'll reach for them and you'll find a way to use them. These are just bits and pieces that just landed on my desk and so I thought I would use them and put them to good use. I can't wait to go back to LA. A weekend was not enough. And you know, a lot of people asked me if I missed living in LA. I was there, I mean, I grew up there. But then I came to Utah in 1994 and I was here up until 2010. That is a big butterfly. You guys, I don't know what to do with that big butterfly. So if you have any ideas, let me know down below because it is huge. Those are butterflies that I bought a few years ago from the Dollar Tree. And I've used up just about all the little ones. I think this is one of the last of the little ones in that package. And then I have those monster size ones that I honestly don't know how to use. So if you have any suggestions, let me know down below. So... I did have a lot of my relatives ask while I was there this weekend because the last time I was there was when I was packing to move here in July of 2020. Before that, I was here in Utah from December 2019 through July of 2020. Went back to LA the month of July to pack my things and come to Utah. And we made it official in August of 2020. Look at how cute that heart looks. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So cute. And uh, so I, I don't miss living in LA. I miss the weather in Southern California. That I do miss. And I miss being able to drive down to the beach, which is just minutes away. I do miss that as well and then all of the food. So there is a lot of diversity when it comes to restaurants. I do miss that. I should actually Google to see if there's a Cuban restaurant in Salt Lake City. I haven't in a while, so maybe I'll do that. 
if you are in northern Utah and you know of a Cuban restaurant, let me know. Look at how cute. I used some Tim Holtz word stickers and that just added the perfect touch. So what I'm trying to do is recreate some of the grungy hearts that I made off camera. So I'm going to reach for some buttons. I've also had these buttons for a long time and I just haven't used them. So let's put them to use. I like to buy the buttons at Hobby Lobby when they are on sale. And, but I don't buy a lot of them because I don't want to hoard buttons if I'm not going to use them. So I only have a few. And that piece of string was also just hanging around on my, on my desk. And I struggled to tie that knot. I think it's because you guys are watching. <laughs> I couldn't tie a bow. It's not just because I had long nails, like before I struggled to tie a bow because I had some really long fingernails. I still struggle and I have no fingernails right now. They're super short. But it turned out super cute. I think next time I go down to California, I'm going to visit San Diego. Old Town San Diego is beautiful. So is Coronado Bay. That's beautiful there too. Um, in Old Town San Diego, there is a restaurant called Fiesta de Reyes. Best Mexican food I've ever had. Best. Outside of, outside of my house or my home. Not my food, but my, my parents. My parents cook really good. I don't cook I don't cook like my parents do. I've tried, but I just gave up. I just let them do the cooking. <laughs> but in San Diego, Fiesta de Reyes, and there's also a great little shop there, and there's museums, and there's a hotel, so that I'll go there for my next trip. My brother still lives in, in Los Angeles, so it's nice. it was nice to, to see him last weekend. But he travels out here to visit my parents, and he's, he's here several times a year, so I see him quite often. But such a treat to see family I had not seen in years. Um, we had family as far from North Carolina. I have two different cousins that both live in North Carolina. And they didn't know that they were only about 20 minutes away from each other. Can you believe that? So it was nice to make, to make uh, family connections. That was great. And we even had family come from from Mexico. I mean, it was a huge, huge celebration, you guys. I added a little bit of paint and a little bit of gold to that heart just to grungy it up a little bit so that it coordinates even better with, with all the grunginess going on. This one needed a little bit more of that matte gel medium to hold down the button, but it holds it down, you guys. Takes just a few minutes to dry, but it did, it did hold in place. When I first bought that Ranger ja uh, matte gel medium, I bought it because it was it worked really well to hold or to glue down metal embellishments on your projects and it really does 
And I'm sure that the Beacon 3-in-1 glue does the same thing. It says it does right on there. But before I started using the Beacon glue, this is what I was using to uh, glue down heavier embellishments. And it works really well. I've got like three different adhesives going on. <laughs> Different glues for different uh, for different embellishments. It's no different from salsas. Different Mexican dishes call for different types of salsas. Just so you know. Again, added another one of uh, Tim Holtz's word stickers. Turned out super cute. So those larger hearts are my favorite. I like the little ones. But the larger ones, absolute favorite. Love them. Here are some other cute embellishments that I had not used in a super long time. I don't remember where I got them. Um, one of the craft stores, I'm sure. They are a little bit dimensional. Um, but I'm using them anyway. Because these were great as charms or dangles so I love the way the charms dangle off of the the edges of the junk journals and I also like adding them to tags and I'll show you that in just a moment so I'm using my crocodile to punch a hole and then I will add an eyelet just to finish it off Oh, and one thing I totally forgot to mention earlier at the beginning of the video is I'm also going to show you how I put these embellishments, the grungy hearts, to use. So stick around for that. I know um, I should have mentioned it from the very beginning, but you'll see. And I'll make sure to add that in the title as well so that you know. <laughs> So it's not just about making the grungy heart embellishments, but also showing you how you can use them. Let me know if you've been to LA, Southern California, aside from Disneyland, let me know what your favorite favorite thing to do or your favorite restaurant or what you enjoy most. I am so grateful that um, that I got to see my grandmother. My grandmother used to live here in Utah with my parents for a little while and she loved it here. But she loves she loves being in L.A. too. In 2019, yeah, February of 2019, we celebrated her 90, let's see, 98th or 97th? 19, 20, 21, 22, 97th birthday. That heart right there. So there's some that I didn't over embellish because you can go you can go big or you can go small um and that other one it just needed a wart sticker and it was fine this one i added again just some string that i had on my desk to make it look like a little um like a little dangle like a little charm And now I'm going to show you how I'm going to put them to use. But yeah, we were in 2019, we were in Mexico celebrating my grandmother's 97th birthday. And that was a huge celebration. That was so much fun. So much fun. I haven't been to Mexico since. I was supposed to be there this month. But I actually canceled those plans because I am staying uh, here because my youngest daughter is about to have a baby. 
Okay, so these are some unfinished projects that I have. Avocado dyed envelope, some packaging, these little bags or pockets that I make from packaging. I will link the video down below if you'd like to see how I make those. And then I also have um, some tags that were unfinished. Here I'm showing how the collage, uh, excuse me, the grungy hearts can now be used as a focal point on these pockets or even on the tags. So that's an option. And they are, they're not, you can use some that aren't bulky so that you can glue them down and then add them to the pages of your junk journal. But they will make a great focal point for any project. So that's just one idea there. And these are tags that I made from collage board. And again, these, I wasn't sure. I mean, I, I made these last year or the year before and just unfinished because I couldn't, I didn't know what to add to them. But now I can add these grungy hearts as a focal point. Or you can even add them like I'm going to do here as a little, a little dangle from that little, from the hole. Super, super cute. And this is my favorite. The plain avocado dyed envelope and we're going to embellish it and it turned out it's going to turn out so cute you guys that I'm actually going to use it and keep it in my personal junk journal and I'll show you how in just a second <laughs> So just by adding a little grungy heart to the envelope, it just dresses it up so beautifully or even on the flap. And that's where I'm going to add this one. Just glue it down to the flap. And it's one of my favorite uh, techniques is to add a little cluster to the flap of junk journal envelopes. And I'll show you how I use it in my journal, just so you have a visual. If you haven't seen the flip through of this junk journal, there's actually two of them. I'll have that video linked down below. And this is my favorite way to use the envelopes in the journal, is just clipped over one of the pages. So now I'm also going to embellish the front of the avocado envelope and then we have all of that space on the envelope to journal or to add a picture or whatever and I really like how it turned out so I'm actually just going to leave it in my junk journal and I'm just going to attach it with a paper clip and then I thought, oh, I could, I could use one of the grungy hearts as a charm on the paper clip. Do you guys have a dish like this on your desk that has the most random of things? All the littles that I just collect in there. There's a button, a battery, bull pins, a broken zipper. <laughs> random you guys but look I found some bolt pins in there so and those are actually from clothing tags so yeah I keep those this is what I was referring to earlier 
I love to use these as charms and as dangles because they hang off of the edge of the of the book pages and it looks really cute dangling from the side and so one of those others that has that dimensional flower on it those would be perfect as dangles on the side because they won't add that bulk between the pages This is an avocado dyed index card. And I'm going to make a little booklet. And I'm just going to glue that one right to the front. So if you're going to make some of these, make a whole bunch of them. Because now you have a perfect piece to add to your projects. So I'm still gonna work on a bunch more since I've already cut all of those hearts and I still have tons of corrugated cardboard. I will most likely be fussy cutting um, larger hearts and just keep them in my stash. And I love how, how well they're coordinating with all of my unfinished projects. So here's a tip. If you work with your favorite colors, then everything you create is going to match because you're using colors that you like. And so this is, this is what happens. You have unfinished projects from two years ago and you make new embellishments and they go really well together. I'm adding a little bit of gold paint to the edges of this tag. This is a jelly print tag that I made a few years ago. And adding a little bit of that gold just so it all goes well together. Perfect. So let me know what you think. Did you think they were grungy enough? <laughs> they could have been grungier. But I think they turned out super cute. Yours are going to look different from mine. And the more I make these, um, they will evolve. And more ideas will come. But you have to start. And then just let your imagination and your creativity take over. This one was also one of my favorites. I like how that string looks tied around. I love that pink little button on there. And it is perfect with this, I was gonna call it a bookmark, with this uh, tag. Turned out, turned out beautiful. And this is from the collage board that I've made. I will link that video down below. I think it might be one or two videos where I just collage on uh, packaging and then cut the pieces down to make tags. And that was, a, I want to say that was the summer of 2020. It's been a while. That string was a little bit bulking, so I just have to hold it down so it really um, adheres, but it does. That clip wasn't long enough to hold it, but it didn't take very long to, to stick down. You guys, thank you so much for sticking, sticking with me for this video. I appreciate you guys being here and listening to my stories. Please let me know what you think. Thank you so much. And let me know if you're going to give these grungy hearts a try. Use your stash and use your junk because that's also important too. Don't just collect it, but use it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys being here. You guys take care. I will see you next time.
Bye.